So the only other modification I want to make to the Glock 19, other than maybe eventually changing the grip texture, is to install a uh, three and a half pound disconnector in the trigger. Um, in my uh, almost 20 years now uh, in the firearms community, there's always been a little bit of a debate about defensive handguns and changing triggers. And the Glock factory five and a half pound trigger smooths out really nicely once the gun is broken in and shoots really well. So there are people out there that will tell you, you will have huge liability issues if you change to the lower pound disconnector. I personally don't believe that to be the case. I mean, that's an opinion and that's a personal choice I've made. I think it's just as safe. I don't think there's a huge liability. And I know there's multiple police agencies out there that will use the three and a half pound disconnector. And if a police officer can go in front of a grand jury, then you should be able to, to without worrying about the three and a half pound disconnector. So I like it in my gun, and here in a second I'm gonna set up the GoPro and I'm gonna show you up close how to install it. Again, that's a personal choice thing. If you don't believe that a defensive handgun should have a modified trigger, then the Glock trigger out of the box is fine. I like the three and a half pound disconnector and that's what I choose to carry. When I got the Glock and I traded for the light, I also, my buddy, tossed in a, a Ghost Ultimate three and a half. Um, I've used Ghost three and a half disconnectors in every Glock I've owned. And there's the biggest thing I can tell you to look for is there's two different versions of this. And there's one they refer to as the Ghost Rocket. And that has a little arm that sticks off. And I'll show you more in the close up. And that requires a little bit of fitting and file work to get it into the gun. The Ghost Ultimate doesn't have that arm and uh, will drop right into the gun. So here in a second, I'm going to set up the GoPro and we're going to shoot kind of a close up, I'm trying some new stuff here. We're going to shoot kind of a close up and uh, see if we can get this thing installed. So let's get a little liability out of the way. It is always recommended to have a gunsmith work on your firearms. The Glocks are painfully simple and I can show you how to do this, but if you've never done it before, it can be a tiny bit tricky. You run the risk of breaking your gun. So if you know a gunsmith, have a gunsmith do it. That being said, it is painfully simple to work on Glocks, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to install this three and a half pound disconnector. And the first step anytime we're doing any kind of firearms maintenance is to make sure that the gun is unloaded. So again, we're going to lock the slide to the rear, drop and verify that there's no magazine, and then look into the chamber and physically look to see that there's no ammo in the chamber. This is important because with a Glock, we're going to have to point it in a safe direction and pull the trigger to take it apart. I use thumb and forefinger. Pull it about an eighth of an inch back, and you can pull down on this detent, slide the slide forward, and the gun's apart. We'll go ahead and set the slide away. So, there are three pins that we have to worry about. Two of them are real easy, and one of them is real hard. So this rear pin here holds in this portion of the trigger, and that's where your disconnector, your factory disconnector is. So that will have to come out the same way it did when we were installing the grip panel. Then we have the small pin at the top. And this pin can be a challenging in the beginning, and it should go right to left fairly easily. So the next pin is this large trigger pin here, and this gun is brand new and it's extremely tight. So I did take it apart once and it presented me a little bit of a challenge. So I know that this pin is tight enough that I can't just punch it out with a pin punch. So what I'm going to have to use is a, is a little bit of force and a little bit of hammer. And since it's laying around and since it's non-marring, I just use my, my little non-marring nylon hammer. Probably not the best thing for using with punches, but it's here and that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to have to take this off the screen to knock this pin out real quick and I'll bring it right back. Okay, so as you can see, we've knocked that pin out right to left. We can just go ahead and pull that out. And then you have this metal block and that holds the trigger in so that needs to come out and the easiest way to do that is to just kind of pry it slightly with a screwdriver and it generally comes out fairly easy. Underneath that is the slide stop which uh, some folks replace these and I've never seen the real reason to. I may just for just for giggles later but we'll set that aside from now and then we'll pull out the trigger assembly as a whole and you'll see this back portion will come out with the front. If we flip it over you can see here is the factory disconnect. So the trick is to get to it we have to remove this bar. So it's kind of 
pull forward and then twist towards you and that removes the trigger bar and then we can just take one of our punches and from this side we can punch the factory disconnect out and once we've done that we take our Glock our ultimate three and a half we'll drop it in and then we'll just replace the trigger bar the way we did the opposite the way we did so it's going to ride about like that and uh, you know any metal to metal contact creates friction so there's a lot of guys especially in the old days that would tear these down and just polish all this metal with a dremel and you can do that without damaging the gun or honestly just shoot it over time i don't know if uh, you Glock guys will tell you that a used Glock is almost better than a new Glock because it, it breaks in and all this will wear in and kind of polish. But if you want, you can polish up all of this metal and kind of uh, smooth out the trigger a little bit more. I'm not going to get into that because I just don't have the time or the energy to break out my Dremel. Once we've done that, the trigger group kind of drops back in. We'll reinstall this plastic pin. which is wanted to be a pain and that holds the rear of the trigger group in and then we get to the challenge of reinstalling this portion um, the biggest challenge to putting this back together is the slide stop it's very easy to get this in the wrong place and it'll cause malfunctions on the gun if you don't it is essential that when you put it back together that this spring here is captured under this pin and hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. But We're going to go ahead and drop the metal portion back in and I like to slide the slide stop in and forward. And We're going to have to push this pin back in just a little bit and that holds the metal bar in and the top portion of the slide stop and we can just slide that in and make sure it's aligned and we'll come back to that in a second this pin goes in right to left pretty easily And you see that that spring is captured underneath this pin and it's right where it needs to be to make the slide stop function properly. And then we'll just reassemble the slide and there you have it. Three and a half pound disconnector install. Hey, it's Jeremy from Lucky Hat Outdoors. And if you like our videos and you have a good time, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram.